Good afternoon and welcome back. Today we are going to do some grilling. That's not barbecue. There's a lot of confusion. Grilling's grilling. Barbecue works with smoke and wood and slow roasting and things like that. So today we're just going to put everything on the grill. Just your whole meal, let's say it's summertime, you don't want to bring heat into the kitchen, or it's wintertime and you just miss the outdoors, it's nice grilled meats. So today we're going to prep all these vegetables. I'm going to show you something special with a lion's mane mushroom that I learned from a mushroom farmer. We've got some bone-in pork chops, cut some steaks, and we'll do some chicken. So let's get started with the vegetables and show you what we got going on. So for the vegetables, I'm just going to cut them at an angle pretty thick. Um, I don't want them as thick as steaks because they're going to cook faster and uh, if you cut them too thick, they're just going to get uh, mushy in the center. We're going to make this really simple. And we could cut them all if I was going to feed an army, but we're not going to feed an army today, so we'll just do some of them. This is a nice, easy meal. You'll see how fast it goes, especially if you buy your steaks pre-cut. I just happen to have a nice uh, ribeye, and uh, I wanted to show you something else with that. So, there's zucchini, there's squash. Now, we got a couple peppers as well. We just quartered them. We'll marinate them all together. Like I said, I'm gonna try to make this as easy as possible for you. Now this lion's mane's mushroom, I've tried to saute it and cook it and I was always trying to hold the integrity of the shaggy mane. Maybe you've seen one before, but it's like little hairs. It's kind of, it's a wonderful tasting mushroom, but if you try to saute it, it gets kind of soggy and everything. And then this gentleman showed me, I think this one's probably just about the right height. We're just going to smash it and see that? See how firm it is? We're going to grill that and it is going to be the most wonderful vegetarian steak you've ever had. Uh, what else do we got here? Oh, and I wanted to show you a sweet potato as well. The thing about the sweet potato is you can't prep it too early because it will start to oxidize and brown really fast on you. So we're just going to get this thing going. All right. Clean these up. And we're going to cut these a little thicker. As I told you before, if you don't work with a flat surface, just careful using your knife. Have a lot of control because you don't want to cut your hands. You don't want the, the potato to roll and hurt yourself. These ones are pretty thick. We'll maybe we'll just, so we can flip them, give them a nice flat edge. All right, so we have all the veggies here. I also have some beets in the sink I've been soaking. Beets are awful dirty. So I wanted to soak them to see if I could just get a little bit more of the dirt off. We're just gonna trim up those ends and we're gonna put everything in the bowl. All right, there's that. And there's the easy part. We're just gonna take some oil, some Worcestershire, some fresh parsley, a little garlic. I generally prefer to mix all my marinades ahead of time so it's uniform on the vegetables, meats, whatever we're working with here. But, Sometimes you forget. I'm gonna grab a little vinegar. Balsamic will work just fine. It's got a sweetness to it, help with the caramelization. Now when you make a marinade, you're gonna grill stuff. You really don't want too much sugar in there. It's just gonna burn, it's gonna to stick to the grill. So even there's a lot of sweetness in a balsamic vinegar. So even with that, I'm going to try and uh, not use too much. Maybe a little dry herbs for color, a little paprika, and a little thyme. Not too much of anything. Again, we're gonna to try to focus on the flavors that are the vegetables themselves. Now you can wrap any of these in foil if you want. 
but for me, after we toss it, I'm just going to put the beets in there. Let's get this tossing around. Everything's getting nice and coated. And again, if you use too much oil, too much anything, um, don't worry about it. You're going to be able to use this bowl. Uh, we have some chicken, some pork. We'll just keep using the same bowl. All sides are evenly coated if possible. All right, our mushroom actually. I'll show you that in a second. So here's our beets. And then our vegetables. Here's our mushroom. It's already, you can see it, it's already absorbing all that marinade. And we'll just put this to the side and let everyone hang out. And that's all we need to do with that. Okay, it's time to start prepping our meats. Our pork is fine. I got this at the butcher. Uh, it was just already cut. The reason I picked ones with bones in, um, I'll show you on the grill. As I said, I have this nice ribeye. You can see how thick the fat cap is. And you could trim it now if it was whole, but that's just kind of a problem. I'm just gonna cut a couple nice steaks from it. Put that back and now I can just trim off any excess fat I don't want. Some of the fat's good for flavor. The thicker your steak, um, the thicker the fat because it will hang out and uh, it will render because it'll be longer on the grill. These steaks aren't particularly too thick and I'm going to pound them lightly. So having a little less fat is going to work out to our advantage. You can see how much I've left on there. I'm going to do this steak now. Anything I don't really want to eat or I don't, moreover, I don't really want to chew on. I'm just going to nick some of that gristle away. Um, I like to eat the fat, just not too much. I'm trying to keep it a slightly healthy. And then there's a little fat, which actually is pretty good, that little fat on the tail. Those ones are good. Looks pretty good. It's really well trimmed. I like that amount of fat on it. Maybe I just take a tiny piece off. You don't have to. Those ones look good. Those look good. Move this over. So I'm going to put those in the bowl too. Then our chickens. I use the chickens last. Um, we're going to grill everything anyways, but when I'm prepping again, I'm going to do vegetables, then I'm going to do red meat, pork, and then chicken, and then any kind of allergen, seafood or shellfish last. If you're working right along, there's really no need to clean everything each and every time you touch it. Now it's probably a good time to clean our knife, but I'm gonna do something else with the chicken and steaks I said. I'm gonna give them a light pound. All right, and with that, the best way to do that is with plastic wrap. Put down the steaks. Place the chicken, maybe this way. All right, now I'm going to use this for the chicken. I want a little tenderized. Sometimes I just will use the flat end. But what I'm really trying to do is I don't need to pound the end too much. I want to pound the tops because I want the whole thing a uniform thickness so it grills at the same time. So I don't have a little burnt end and I'm waiting for the top to cook. Sometimes when I'm grilling, if I have a nice thick breast on top and the tails, I'll put the tails together on the grill. Now the beef, we're going to break up that fat first and they're cooperating pretty good so I don't have to use it's a nice piece of meat tougher piece of meat you want, want to use the little spikes and then you can check with your hand you can see they're nice and uniform same with the steaks I'm going to push the steaks back together again I'm going to do this exact same thing I'm going to do the steak and chicken first I'll do the pork last with my clean hand, do a little garlic. 
a little parsley and then um, take this glove off. A tiny bit of Worcestershire. Black pepper. And I'll salt them again on the grill. We'll just do a light salt. If I was gonna marinate these overnight, I wouldn't add salt because it will pull some of the moisture out of the meats. So I would just do some herbs and oil and garlic overnight and the tiniest bit. You can use apple cider vinegar. You can use another lemon juice, depending on your application, lime juice, different spices. Just kind of tailor it to whatever you have. Try to get everything I'm putting the bowl up. Now the pork chop marinade, something a gentleman taught me. I forgot what he was. He was selling insurance one day or something to me at the catering company. And he said, oh, have you ever had a true Iowa pork chop? And I said, well, I guess, I mean, we get some meat from Iowa and Colorado. And he said, no, 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 this is a thing. And I was like, okay, what's your thing? So I'm gonna show you. Take about a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, not too much. Worcestershire. Again, not too much because the marinade is just going to fall off. Salt, garlic. We can put black pepper on later. Oh, and the oil. Okay. We're going to mix that around. Try to get a bit of a paste in there. You can see it just comes together if you don't add too much of anything. But it comes out really nice. Then you're going to take these pork chops. And roll them around, get them nice and coated, as you can see. Let's, looks like we got everything ready for the grill. Let's head outside. All right, here we go. I preheated the grill to about 500. I actually have a little infrared over here as well, which makes this one really hot. So first thing we're gonna do is clean this off a little bit. So I'm just gonna spray, don't spray into the fire. You'll see you'll get flames. So you spray this direction and hopefully you won't get any flames. You could spray a towel a little bit and we're just gonna wipe. First thing we do, is just put our beets up there. We'll get all this old stuff off here. All right, should be good to go. We're gonna start with our veggies first. Now we're gonna spray again. It's nice to spray your vegetables a little bit each time so they don't stick. Like I said, that balsamic might stick a little bit. And there's our mushroom. We'll put our peppers down. Now it's winter out, so we're gonna have a hard time keeping some temperature in the grill with it open. Put our sweet potatoes down. They have a lot of sugar in them and starch, so I'm gonna make a special point of making sure they're really coated. The other ones I'm not too worried about. So there's some oil in the bottom there. We can just make sure that we get it. All right, we're done with those. Let's get right on. I want a nice sear on the steaks. Let's just close this for one second. Temperatures obviously came down because it was up. Head the door down for a second. We're just gonna get some black pepper on those pork chops on the side we're putting down. A little more on the steaks. Grill temperature should be back up pretty good. Place our steak over our infrared. You don't want things to stick. It just won't look as good. It won't taste as good. So you can see, we got a nice spray on the pork chop. Now in the summer, we could cook with our top open. But right now, it's not a good idea. So I'm putting a little salt again. Some of that salt's gonna melt off as the juices push out of the meats. Um, a little black pepper on our pork chop. Now I'll tell you the story of the Iowa pork chop. So this guy told me, it's very simple, has a very Simple marinade of the Dijon, Worcestershire, a little oil. We'll let this ride for a minute. 
And we're gonna sear both sides. And that pork chop, because it's thick and because of that bone, isn't going to cook properly. It could be well done on the outside, but it could be uh, rare right next to the bone. So we're gonna stand those pork chops, pork chops up on their end, and we're gonna let the heat go through the bone and cook that. It's going to push moisture out of the bone into the meat, and by keeping the non-bone side the furthest away from the heat, it's gonna cook that slowest. So it should all come together pretty good. All right. Time to flip, this is a rather hot grill. Let's see what we got here for our mushroom first. Oh, look at those grill marks. You're gonna love it. Uh, no marks on the squash yet. I'm just gonna let them hang out. See the steaks, oh, beautiful. We're gonna get that flipped. Look at those. How's our chicken looking? Gorgeous. Let's check the pork chop. Oh, good enough, because really, we don't wanna overcook them, so. Maybe we'll press down a little bit, see if we can get a little bit better mark before uh, we go over, because presentation is important. Let's check a potato. Ah, we're gonna let it ride. Close it down just a second, see if those pork chops get a little sear on them. So now we're just standing up the pork chops, as I said. Hopefully we can keep them all together just like so. I'm gonna move the chicken back to a hotter spot on the grill and I'm gonna go grab a platter because the steaks are done. You could tell they got pretty firm pretty quick. I had them in the hottest spot. They have a beautiful color on them. Also, our little mushroom steak looks done. Put that to the side. Chicken's got another minute. Oh, looking good though. All right. See what we got for vegetables. If you're grilling out here, let's say you're in the winter and you got all this going on and things are gonna take longer than others, what you can do is we'll throw all this back in the oven right before uh, we serve it. Oh, our pork chops are looking good. Now I can tell the pork chops are still a little rare. They're still soft. Let those finish up. The beets we're just gonna leave on there. We could have put those on while we were prepping everything. They're gonna take a solid 45 minutes to an hour. The sweet potatoes are gonna take about 10 minutes a side, 15 to 20 minutes total, depending on how thick you cut them. The pork chops after you flip them, they're gonna take a good solid 10 extra minutes. But our chicken should be almost done right now. We also don't wanna burn the pork chops. So we see they're dripping. I'm just gonna move them over, feel our chicken. Nice and firm. Let's find about this one. Oh yeah. Whew, look at that. All right, everything's finished. Welcome back to the kitchen. Uh, you can see this beautiful platter of food. We're gonna make a couple quick sauces for it. If you remember, or if you saw in the previous episode, we're just gonna take a clean, damp towel, form a circle, tie it around the end, put that right there. We're gonna make a quick vinaigrette. With that, just a tablespoon of Dijon. It's gonna be for the vegetables. A little parsley a little salt, a little pepper, some balsamic vinegar. I really like balsamic with grilled vegetables. I think it works extremely well. We're not gonna make it too thick or too thin. We're just gonna kinda keep it so it can glaze the vegetables. So get all that stirring in. Once you see they become uniform, we just drizzle in the oil. You can add honey to this if you want it sweeter. Like I said, I think the balsamic's pretty sweet. Once you get an emulsification going, you can add the oil a little bit faster. And if you add, if you keep adding oil, you'll start making almost a mayonnaise. You can see there, that's good to go. Next, something else we'll do really fast. We're gonna take a little garlic. This is a chimichurri. This is about, I was in Argentina and I was amazed at how simple this was. Now they put a red chili in there. I was gonna have some Fresno chilies, but as I told you before, we're gonna adapt because they were out. 
So a little olive oil, quite a bit actually. It's a pretty oily thing. A splash of red wine vinegar. I like sherry vinegar too, but again, we're adapting. Not too much at all. Some black pepper, some salt. Okay, we'll see how that goes in a minute. And I'm going to, I don't have a red pepper, so I'm just gonna use a bell pepper just for some of that quality. And I want it nice and nice and small. I don't want it to overpower anything. So we'll put a little mark there and mark there. Maybe we'll just cut those in half. I slide through and I get all that fleshy part out. Move that to the side. Once you get it down, you can kind of hold it down with your knife. That's good. If you got any thick ones, you can just Go back and see about making them in half. Great. Now I'm in a hurry because I want to eat it. Just happens to be lunchtime here in Colorado. Now, as I said, one of the things about the chimichurri is it is really oily. I'm just gonna finish up with that. That looks more like it. Oh, it's good. Not too much salt, not too much pepper, not too much vinegar, just real good. Now, the really fun part starts. Move this all aside. Let's have a mixed grill plate. Here's another simple presentation you can do to impress your friends. We're gonna make this real simple. We've got a nice plate for you right here. We got a sweet potato. You know, you have so much going on here that like you really don't need more than one of everything. So here's a pretty little zucchini, squash, regular Italian zucchini. We'll cut this guy up, get this going. So we've got that. Oh, the steak. So you can see the way the grains run. They kind of run this direction. So we're gonna cut it a little bias. How do we do? Looks like we got a little medium, medium rare there. There's still a little juice in the center, which is what we're looking for. Might as well just use our hands. Cut this red pepper a couple times. Everyone gets so focused on the meat, they forget how delicious everything else is. So what do we have left? I think that's one of everything. Here's our mushroom steak. Let's just put that aside for now. A little of our chicken. And then I want to show you some of that pork. All right, this one looks beautiful. Now to serve it, you could serve it on the bone for your guests, or someone told me once too, that if it's on the bone, it doesn't matter how fancy the restaurant is, you can pick that bone up and chew it. I don't know how true that is, but I definitely have used that my entire life. So you can see here, we've cooked all the way through by heating up this bone and uh, take that little snack off there. And we see the grains run this way, so I want to cut against them. It'll just a little more tender. Oh, look at that. Perfect. It's cooked, it's soft, it's moist. Nobody wants a dry piece of pork. Discard these ends. All right. Now, one last fun part. Let's just move this aside for now. Here we have our meat, we have our veggies in the back. We're gonna take a little balsamic. Not a lot, it's strong. I told you we wanna highlight the flavors of the vegetables. And then the chimichurri, which you can use on all three meats. You can see how oily it is, but it's not runny. Salt, pepper, parsley. And there you have a mixed grill plate. Just beautiful, can't wait to eat it. So that was it today. How to put everything on the grill, like I said, if it's hot in the summertime or you're just missing it in the wintertime, you can get everything on one grill at the same, all at the same time. You could start, like I said, you could start the beets early. Uh, they're still roasting, but I promise you they'll be tasty as everything else. We have a beautiful plate here. We have our Iowa style pork chop, our grilled balsamic chicken, 
our ribeye steak with chimichurri, sweet potato, grilled squash, grilled zucchini, grilled pepper. Oh, I don't even know. And it's still beautiful over here. This is something that uh, your friends will come in and see that they're gonna think you're a real professional and you saw how easy it was. We just put it on the grill, flip it over, cut it, and these sauces are as simple as can be. So thanks for joining us and next time we're gonna do some barbecue.